What is up guys, this is Alex from Double Move Sports back with another perfect off season video. This has been an incredibly fun series where I take a team, I go through um, the free agents that they have coming up, the guys that are gonna be free agents on the open market and their draft capital. And I look at their roster, at their salary cap space, at their draft picks and figure out what would be the perfect off season for this organization done a ton of teams already on our channel. Go check those out if you haven't already. Also hit that like and subscribe button. Helps us out a ton here at Double Move Sports. And comment for the teams you wanna see me break down next. But today we are gonna go ahead and get into the Detroit Lions. And to me, this is a team that should go ahead and go through a rebuild. So they're coming off of a very disappointing 5-11 and season. Matt Patricia has been fired and they've hired Dan Campbell as the head coach. They have about 15 to $30 million in projected cap space. So not at the top of the league, but we've seen some teams that have been in the negative. So this is definitely um, some flexibility, gives them a little bit of room to work with here. Um, and the Lions to me just need to full on go ahead and start building for the future. They're clearly not going to be competitive with the roster they have now. And I'll get into what that means for Matt Stafford. I'll get into what that means for a lot of their veterans as we go. Um, but that's kind of the mindset I'm taking as we approach this Detroit Lions team. They actually have a lot of free agents that are set to hit the open market. I'll flash them up on the screen here. You've got Marvin Jones, Kenny Galladay, and Danny Amendola at the wide receiver spot. You've got Adrian Peterson, um, Ode Abushi, Duran Harmon, Everson Griffin, Romeo Aquara, uh, Jared Davis, Reggie Ragland, Daryl Roberts, and Jamal Agnew. So, a ton of guys. Those are kind of the key names that I identified on this team. There's some deeper guys as well. I believe Mohamed Sanu, amongst some others. But these are kind of the key contributors that I really want to break down that are free agents. And when you look at this list for a team that's rebuilding, there's certain guys that you just have to let go. And the first on the list is Marvin Jones. He's been a great contributor for this Lions team over the past several seasons. Um, but being the age that he is getting into his early 30s, um, it's just time to move on from him replace him with another wide receiver, whether it be in free agency in the or in the draft, which we will get into. Um, but you do have to let Marvin Jones go. Same goes for Danny Amendola here. But to me, like Kenny Galladay is your franchise number one alpha wide receiver, and you have to bring him back. If you're going to bring in a different quarterback from Matt Stafford, which we will get into, you have to bring back Kenny Galladay. Give whoever is the quarterback for this Lions team a big target, a big weapon in the offense. Give him um, a wide receiver to help him grow and develop in his NFL career. So you re-sign Kenny Galladay here with some of that cap space you have available. And then you go down this list. I think Adrian Peterson, Odea Bushi, who's kind of like a depth offensive lineman, Duran Harmon and Everson Griffin, two veterans on the defensive side of the ball. I think you let all those guys go. You don't want to re-sign them to these veteran deals um, this season. And then also Reggie Ragland, and Dale Roberts, they fall into that boat as well. Veteran guys, not going to be essential to this rebuild. We will let them go. Now, Romeo Aquara at defensive end, I think the Lions should go ahead and re-sign. 10 sacks in 2020, led that defense as far as the pass rush goes. I think you can bring back Aquara, have him as kind of like a, one of the cornerstone pieces of your defense, along with Jeff Okuda, who they drafted early uh, in the first round last season. And then Jared Davis, you bring back just to be a solid interior linebacker. Um, you know, he's not popping off the page as far as his production goes, but you need some sort of continuity for this football team as they bridge into the next chapter. So that's why you bring back Jared Davis and Jamal Agnew. This should be a given wide receiver, a special teams guy, a utility player. They can get him back super cheap, um, a leader on their special teams unit who's actually started taking a lot more snaps at receiver as well. So I think that's an easy re-signing for this Lions football team. So real quickly to recap, we're going to re-sign Kenny Galladay, Romeo Aquara, Jared Davis and Jamal Agnew, and we're going to let Marvin Jones, Danny, Danny Amendola, Adrian Peterson, Ode Abushi, Duran Harmon, Everson Griffin, Reggie Ragland, and Daryl Roberts go in free agency. Now, just based on those signings, we're already getting close to using up all that cap space that the Lions are going to have available. So we're actually going to go ahead and pull off a trade. I alluded to this earlier, but I think the Lions should go ahead and trade Matt Stafford Look, he's been a great quarterback for most of his career, above average. I mean, as far as the stats go, the touchdowns, the yards, even the attempts back when he had Megatron, like Matt Stafford has been above average. He's been a really good NFL quarterback, but he just hasn't been 
that caliber guy to lead this Lions organization to a Super Bowl. If he lands in the right place, maybe he goes to the Colts, maybe he goes to New England, maybe he goes somewhere else. I think he could still have a Super Bowl run in him on the right team. But when you're this Lions organization, you have to realize with the roster you have with Matt Stafford, you're not a Super Super Bowl contender. So you need to go ahead and move on. So in this perfect offseason scenario, we are going to go ahead and trade Matt Stafford to the New England Patriots for the 15th overall selection. I know, you know, the the trade value for Stafford is all over the board, but for this being the perfect offseason for the Lions, we're going to assume they can get that 15th overall pick in the NFL draft. So not only would the Lions get great draft capital for this rebuild, but they'd also clear around $13 million in cap space for this season. They will still have a dead cap um, hit until after the 2021 season, but immediately they get $13 million in cap space. So that gives them the ability with the space they had before. I know we re-signed some guys, but with trading Stafford, the ability to make some free agent moves, which is going to be exactly what we talk about next. In free agency, there's two areas where I would love to see the Lions go out and get a splash signing. The first one's the wide receiver spot. We talked about letting Marvin Jones and Danny Amendola go. Um, Kenny Galladay will be back, but they need depth at that position. And Juju Smith-Schuster, to me, makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of good free agents on this open market. You look at Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay, who we resigned, Allen Robinson, um, T.Y. Hilton, A.J. Green as some older guys. But Juju Smith-Schuster, to me, makes sense. You get a guy who lines up predominantly in the slot um, to go alongside of Kenny Galladay. And whoever the next young quarterback is on this team is now going to have DeAndre Swift behind him in the backfield. Kenny Galladay and Juju Smith-Schuster at wide receiver and TJ Hawkinson at tight end. That's going to be very, very important for this young quarterback to grow and develop because he's going to have really, really elite, talented wide receivers that can get open and work off of one another um, to draw number one coverages and get the other guy open. So I think Juju would be an absolutely fantastic signing for the Detroit Lions. And then we flip to the defensive side of the ball for the other splash signing. Justin Simmons at safety would be a great pickup for this Lions team. We let Duran Harmon walk in free agency. So Justin Simmons would be an upgrade at that spot. You bring in an athletic Pro Bowl safety that can bring leadership to this secondary. He can stop the run. He can cover. He can kind of do it all. He would be a huge lift for this team that really, really needs more of those cornerstone pieces on the defense with some young developing defensive backs as well. I think Justin Simmons would be a fantastic signing, but that's pretty much going to take their cap up to the wire. They might even have to rework some other guys' deals to make sure they can do both of these along with the re-signings, but Juju Smith-Schuster and Justin Simmons in free agency would immediately give this Lions team a ton of talent as we look towards the draft. Now, as we get into the NFL draft, first we have to look at the draft picks that the Lions have. They have pick seven overall in the first round. In this scenario, they're going to have pick 15 as well, which we picked up from the Patriots in that Matt Stafford trade. In round two, you're going to have pick 41, and in round three, pick 72, with a lot of needs to be filled, most importantly, the quarterback spot. So we're going to go right there with the seventh overall pick, and the guy is going to be Trey Lance, quarterback out of North Dakota State. This is where the Lions get their quarterback of the future, um, and Trey Lance is a guy with a lot of the skills needed to be a franchise quarterback. You know, Josh Allen isn't necessarily the comp, but I think about Josh Allen's skill set when he came out of college versus where he is now, and I see a lot of that same kind of development potentially happening for Trey Lance. He's got great size, great arm strength, great athleticism. He just needs to fine-tune some pieces of his game um, to take him to that NFL caliber quarterback. So he gives the Lions their quarterback of the future in a talented young offense now with Trey Lance at quarterback, DeAndre Swift, Kenny Galladay, Juju Smith-Schuster, and TJ Hawkinson, you really have a strong young nucleus on this team. And Trey Lance is the pick here at seven overall. Next at pick 15, we're going to move to the defensive side of the ball. We let Everson Griffin go in free agency. And here we're going to pick up Quiddy Pay, edge defender from Michigan um, they get a really, really strong pass rusher here to go alongside Okwara on this defense, really get after the quarterback from both sides. Dan Campbell gets more youth and explosiveness to his defensive unit with this pickup. And not only are you starting to build some veterans on the defensive side of the ball now, but now you've got Jeff Okuda, um, you've got Quiddy Pay on the defensive side of the ball, and you're really starting to get youth in the secondary. 
on the D line as well. And then obviously, as we mentioned earlier on the offensive side of the ball. So really getting good youth on this football team to go along with the veterans to help the younger guys along. And now with pick 41 in the second round, we're going to go ahead and move on to the day two selections. And the pick here is going to be Wyatt Davis guard out of Ohio state. You got to pick up an alignment here, give this young offense a boost, make sure that the running game can succeed. Make sure um, that Trey Lance is going to be protected in the pocket and has time to get it to his wide receivers. Wyatt Davis is a great run blocker. He's got the potential to have a very, very strong pro career on the interior O-line. Uh, so this is just a, a rock solid pick for this Lions team that already has really, really good pieces in place. And Wyatt Davis, you just plug him right into this offensive line to be an impact player from day one. And now the last pick we're actually going to cover here is going to be pick 72 in round three. The Lions have some round four through seven selections as well, but we're not going to quite get that deep just because the hit rate's a little lower. We really want to talk about the impact players for this team. But with pick 72 in round three, we're going to go back to that secondary that we've talked so much about and pick up Asante Samuel Jr., Jr., cornerback from Florida State. And this is a player that's not going to come in and be an outside corner alongside Jeff Okuda for, you know, two stud young cornerbacks. But Asante Samuel Jr. is actually going to line up in the slot. He's a smaller guy um, who has a lot of playmaking ability, but he's ju he just doesn't have the size to match up against some of these big physical wide receivers in the NFL. So Asante Samuel, he's not going to be this every down starter on the outside at the cornerback spot, but picking him up in round three, um, as a guy who can play the slot very, very well in a league that is trending more and more towards passing, trending more and more towards these three wide receiver sets, is going to get a lot of run for this Lions team, fills a need for them right off the bat at the cornerback spot. Um, and maybe he's not their primary slot corner right off the bat. Maybe he's not, but he could quickly develop into a very, very, very good playmaking cornerback used in specific situations in the NFL. So Asante Samuel Jr. should have an impact on this team right off the bat, and it continues to build out their secondary with Justin Simmons, who we brought in in free agency at safety, being a real leader on the defensive side of the ball. So that wraps up the draft picks for the Lions. We'll recap it on the screen here really quickly. We got Trey Lance in round one, followed by Quiddy Pay in round one on the defensive side of the ball as an edge rusher. In round two, we picked up Wyatt Davis, offensive guard from Ohio State. And then in round three, Asante Samuel Jr., cornerback out of Florida State. And that's going to kind of do it for this video. That's everything we're going to break down. But before we jump off, we are going to recap everything we talked about for the Detroit Lions, starting with the free agents. We're going to re-sign Kenny Galladay, Romeo Aquara, Jared Davis, and Jamal Agnew. We're going to let go of Marvin Jones, Danny Amendola, Adrian Peterson, Ote Abushi, Duran Harmon, Everson Griffin, Reggie Ragland, and Dale Roberts. So a mass exodus. Um, of a lot of these older veteran players as we get an influx of young talent on this team. Before free agency, we're actually going to trade Matt Stafford to the Patriots for the 15th overall pick, get some cap flexibility, get a pick that we can use um, to really build more youth on this team. And then in free agency, we're going to make two splash signings, one on each side of the ball. We're going to get Juju Smith-Schuster on the offensive side, Justin Simmons, a safety on the defensive side. And then in the draft, we're going to pick Trey Lance, quarterback of the future for the Detroit Lions at seven overall, followed by Quiddy Pay, Wyatt Davis, and Asante Samuel Jr., giving this Lions team a total makeover with their new head coach, Dan Campbell, as well as we head into the 2021 season. So that is going to do it. I want to see in the comments below what you think of this rebuild. Um, what would you do differently and what picks did you like here? What signings did you like in this breakdown? Also, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We're going to keep coming out with these off-season videos. We're going to have dynasty content. Obviously, when we're in season, we're going to have really good fantasy football content as well. So again, this is Alex from Double Move Sports, and we'll see you next time.